Good evening. We're going to get ready to begin. Welcome to our Committee of the Whole for Thursday, April 20th, 2023. We are going to begin our committee reports with the Education Committee. Hello. You have notes in front of you, or should have notes in front of you. Um, education is relatively straightforward this month. As far as motions, you have two students with contracts for out-of-district placements, either the placement itself or ESY. Uh, no relatives, we did check that. Um, you have an agreement with Briarcliff Swim Club for ESY for the uh, summer for those selected dates. You have an agreement with Pediatric the Therapeutic Services and you have an updated field trip list the field trip list update right now is adding Dorney Park to the approved list. You will also see two out-of-state trips for approval. Both are seniors. Senior and junior, senior and junior trips. Um, one is a water park out of state. What's the second one? Oh, there you go. Yes. Um, so those will be separate items next week because they're out-of-state field trips. Um, also on motion, you have the, we talked about it last month, but pulled it, the contract for Camelot, our program over at Collingdale. Um, Mr. Durio has looked at it twice, so is administration and Camelot themselves. It is a two-year contract uh, for up to 72 kids. Right now we've got about 40 kids over there and we are renting that space. That's separate from the contract itself. Um, that needs to be approved. If for some reason it isn't going to be approved, we will need to find new placements for the 40 kids who are currently there, minus any senior who's graduating, but there aren't that many. Um, so that is up for vote next week. Again, two-year contract with a possibility of one-year renewals after that, but right now we're pushing for the two years to get that program settled over at Collingdale. Um, the only other issue that didn't make it to the items to be discussed is the after prom. There has been discussion about after prom. Um, we received a letter from administration today uh, on behalf of the parents requesting that the board have a motion for a donation. This has been done in the past. It used to be done by uh, Ms. McGlynn, who was an assistant principal at the high school. Then after prom kind of took a pause during COVID. Now there's a group who is trying to get it back again. Um, we just need to know if the board does want it to at least be a motion and then obviously you would vote yes or no next week. But just a little bit of guidance of yes, you want to see it on the motion as a motion or no, somebody's going to call it from the floor next week or no, we don't want it on at all. In the past, I believe it was $5,000, but they, the letter is not asking for a specific amount right this second. It is just asking for assistance. But I believe it was $5,000 pre-COVID. It's almost always been in the gym at the high school. Uh, 11 to 3? 11 to 3. 11 p.m., 3 a.m. 3 a.m., excuse me. So is everybody okay with putting it on as a motion and then you can vote it up or down next week? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that, unless there are questions, is all we have for education. I have a question okay. about um, Camelot School. Can yep. you give us your, um, your feedback recommendations regarding but, that? Well, sure. So the overarching recommendation right now is that we need to have it. Again, the, if we do not have it for next school year, we need to find placements for those 40 kids. In my estimation, about half of those kids would go back to their home schools, and about half of those kids would need out of district placements, which come at an additional cost, and we have to get those schools to accept those kids. That will be very difficult um, going forward. What I would propose is that we make better use of the number of slots that we're paying for. Right now, that program houses a specific 
level of disability and type of disability. Um, they do allow us to place kids there as what we call a diagnostic. Kids are waiting for uh, their evaluations. But we know that it's never going to be completely filled because we have kids that move in. We need a place. We always need a little bit of a gap. Um, but we could be us utilizing that more than the 40 kids that we're using now. But my absolute recommendation is that we need it. Not only do we need it for the kids who are currently there and who may be there, but if that program no longer existed, that building then becomes open and it is zoned for a school. Okay. Anything else? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Next up, um, I don't see Mr. Buck. We're going to go to human resources and then we'll come back to finance. Good evening. Um, human resources begin on. Sorry, I forgot to announce that um, while we were on spring break, it was assistant principals uh, recognition week. Um, and so we did recognize them through cabinet and provide them with a um, gift bag. Part of that gift bag, they do have two um, certificates that they can pass in between now and July to miss either a committee of the whole or a board meeting. So if you don't see them here, it was a gift of time, which is way more than what we gave them in the gift cards. The principal's recognition week is May 1st. They will be getting the same gift, but their expiration date will be in August because they'll be getting it one month later. Um, so it'll still ensure that we'll have an administrator here at, for some point, but if you see them mi missing, it's because we're trying to give them the gift of time back, and we appreciate all that they do, and by the time we get to May, their day will have been over, so we want to go ahead and announce that now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Human resources begin on page two of our board uh, agenda this evening for Committee of the Whole. We have run resignation at Darby Township School. One of our supplemental teachers uh, was actually able to secure a position um, in a certificated area, so he did move on from our district. So that is one resignation for the month um, for our professional staff. We have a resignation of two classified employees. One is a former employee that um, we did locate in the system as far as a substitute that was coming into our transportation department. Um, but we haven't been utilized this person in a while, so they will have to reapply. The other individual is um, a food prep and cashier. On page three, we were able to secure a school psychologist. That position has been open for some time. Um, and we also have a long-term sub coming in for the climate manager at one of our buildings. We were able to secure a few uh, security to add to our security team. We have an instructional aide beginning at Delcroft, and we have one individual at our Darby Township School that will be transferring over to Knight Academy to provide services to our students there. We have two transfers within the district. Uh, one is going from a non-instructional to an instructional aide position, and we have a custodian that's going into um, our maintenance and plumbing position and our grounds and facilities. Number nine, we have an approval for the resolution of an employee. Um, there is some documentation to go along with that. And then the next three deal with our 21st century and extended school year summer programming. And that concludes my report. So the position that this individual is going to do is uh, 70 students, but this position is for the K-8 to uh, mentor.
we are looking to fill the position for this year for Ms. Jackson. We're right um, on the cusp of our state test. So we wanna make sure that our students um, in her current location are testing in their environment with that individual. So yeah, there's a good chance that that may be held off unless we can secure a teacher um, for her replacement right after testing. But uh, we have been working with her for some training days. K to eight. They do. She's there until the end of the month. My name's. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, uh, I'm presenting uh, the next update for the 23-24 uh, budget process. Uh, each of the board members should have a copy of it. This will be posted on the district website uh, tomorrow. So the agenda tonight will uh, just be an update or review of the budget expenses and the challenges. Uh, we have uh, budget expense by object code, uh, preliminary budget expenditures by function code, uh, purchases, contracts, and other, and the 23-24 general fund budget timeline, the remainder of what's going to happen, and then uh, next report. So I put this slide back on again, and I believe it was Mrs. Jenkins had a question. I believe her question was going to be, uh, what is what does the unfunded the word unfunded mean uh, in this on this particular slide? And so I have on there charter schools and special education, uh, teachers, uh, transportation, special placements. So as just to clarify when I use the term unfunded, does not mean that those items are not being taken care of. Uh, the district is still obligated to fulfill and pay all charter school uh, tuitions. Uh, we also must um, uh, abide by and commit to uh, the needs of special education children. Uh, and same thing with retirement costs and transportation costs for special placements. That unfunded mandate does not relieve us of our responsibility and commitment to uh, what student needs are. This is just simply saying that we are not receiving enough money from the Department of Ed to cover all of our expenditures. Uh, and then it, when that occurs, uh, then that, um, that part of the calculation falls into uh, tax increases or budget reductions in order to uh, commit to those obligations. So that's why I put that on there again. Uh, so the last meeting we had, uh, I only uh, reported out on uh, the starting with third line purchase service, purchase professional services down to other uses of fund balance. Uh, this time uh, and last meeting I said I would have uh, a preliminary proposed budget completed for, that would include salary and benefits. So that's what you see in this, uh, in this uh, document here on this slide. So in total, uh, the budget uh, in total is gonna be $103,240,534. Uh, uh, you can see uh, the differences in the increases. So employee salaries, uh, this, is a, this is salary increases along with uh, new positions. Uh, it's going up 1160000 uh, we have benefits that will be going up 557,000 uh, that are also associated with those uh, increases in salaries. Uh, then we have uh, purchase professional and technical services. Uh, these are, and there's another slide that will talk about some of the contractual obligations uh, that were recently voted on. So they're in the budget. Uh, purchase pro property services, uh, there's a reduction I put a simple number in there. That was the 
uh, cost, uh, a portion, a part of the cost of the HVAC project. Uh, this was a reduction from the ESSERS funding, the ESSERS ARP. So we had $4.8 million uh, in that uh, federal grant that uh, we will not uh, put the expenditure back in, nor will we put the revenue back in. Uh, other purchase services also have has to do with uh, uh, other contractual arrangements, uh, for example, um, uh, security uh, and any other increase uh, in um, those services uh, that we uh, will engage from outside sources. Uh, as usual, I try to keep the supply, the property, and other uh, objects and other uses of finances, or, or excuse me, of funds uh, stable uh, and try to maintain what is, uh, uh, what it has been in, in years past. Uh, those numbers may go down depending upon how I go through the line items and review them. Uh, I don't, uh, with the 1,160, uh, part of those funds will come from the ESSERS ARP funding and ESSERS uh, set aside. Uh, we have to spend those monies down, those dollar amounts down by September of 24. So the, my intent is to get most of those monies spent and allocated by June 30 of 24, uh, and that way we're uh, using those funds in the, curr in the current budget, in, the, in this budget document. Uh, so there's that. This is just a, a pie chart of what it looks like. Um, you can see uh, employee benefits, uh, excuse me, employee salaries and benefits take up most of the uh, of the budget. And this is just looking at uh, the budget expenditures in total by function code. So you can see regular, it starts with regular instruction, special education, vocational technical, or excuse me, vocational education, and the other categories are self-explanatory. And that continues on to the next slide. Uh, and you can see uh, student activities and community services and then debt service. So just as uh, another point of uh, clarification, the debt service is the amount of money that we pay on an annual basis for money that has been borrowed in previous years, for example, the high school renovation and any other renovations that took place, capital improvements that took place in the district. And again, this is just another pie chart of what that looks like from a visual point of view. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there were recent purchases and contracts that were awarded. And this is just, this was in the last presentation. This is just uh, a repeat of that slide uh, from uh, the previous meeting. Uh, let's see here. So the, the first category, uh, the security equipment purchases, uh, those are items that are coming out of the current year, out of the 22-23 uh, year. Uh, these items were uh, not budgeted, but were necessary. Uh, so this will have uh, a potential impact on fund balance. Uh, security contracts, Again, uh, the 220 uh, for the four guards has come out of current. The 445 is coming out of the 2324. Uh, and also the 858 is uh, coming out of the 2324. There is a small portion of the, uh, uh, in this case, the safe corridors uh, agreement that a portion of those funds, not a portion of the 858, but there is another expenditure that will come out of the current year. Uh, and then we have uh, the assistant principal, that's a contract over at the high school. Uh, and then the other is the, uh, the course coverages, prep periods and bonuses uh, uh, in the current year. And those items, uh, are estimated to be three million ninety-seven thousand thirty-six dollars. Uh, I just want to go 
back to this, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, just want to go back to this real quick, or back to before I get to that next slide. Uh, so keep in mind that during the course of the year, we have had uh, vacancies that the district has not been able to fill. So those funds uh, are, are funds that have not been spent. So those, those items that have not been spent will fall, in, fall out in fund balance at the end of the year. Um, so th the hope is, the plan is, and I'm pretty confident in saying that, is that some of those items that are listed there uh, that are in the current year will certainly be covered by those positions that have not been filled. Uh, but also keep in mind, some of these expenditures are because of those positions not being filled. Um, so there will be some fallout. Uh, I believe that it will not have an adverse effect on fund balance, meaning adverse, meaning that it will decrease. I had uh, reported last month that the goal is to keep the fund balance moving uh, upward uh, uh, so that we are able to do some refinancing and also borrow additional funds for renovations of some of our buildings in the, near, in the future. Are there any questions up until now? Yes, so, so uh, thank you, Mrs. Abney. Uh, so the 34 uh, Motorola's, we already ordered those, and we're going to keep, the, we're going to bring those in. Uh, and we have older radios that need to be replaced. So uh, Mr. Rosnov is going to uh, look over all that equipment, and then we'll replace as necessary, uh, and then we'll uh, have backups for those. Uh, but we will distribute the newer technology. Uh, as far as the additional radios for uh, the safe quarters team, there is a, uh, a radio that uh, is less expensive uh, and will only have a signal, uh, a bandwidth signal, bandwidth, Dr. Lowry, okay, bandwidth, that channel, yeah. thank you, thank you, channel that will only uh, give them uh, access to communicate with uh, APHS. Mm -hmm. These other radios uh, go district-wide. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, this is just a, uh, a timeline. Uh, so far, we've covered uh, everything on this page. Uh, we did the object code 300 through 900 last meeting, and as I stated, we were going to present uh, the salaries and benefits uh, this meeting. Uh, moving forward, uh, the I have on here April 27th will be adopt the proposed final uh, budget. Uh, this is, and again, this is a proposed final budget. This is not the final budget, uh, and that's tentative. Uh, I may move that date to have it a special meeting before May 18th. Uh, to adopt that, uh, and then uh, that has to be available to the public for a minimum of 30 days. Uh, the tricky part is I can't wait until the May meeting because between May 25th and June 22nd is not uh, a full 30 days. So I may, most likely I will have a special board meeting before the May 18th Committee of the Whole. Um, financial reports and uh, projection res discussion will be up next. Uh, general fund uh, budget expenditure categories, that'll be all, the, all categories will be discussed. Uh, and uh, general fund uh, adoption of proposed final. And there's just one other thing before I get off of this. I thought I put it in one of my slides, and I did not. So where it stands right now is that, yeah, I'm sorry, I missed, I missed that. Uh, I wanted to put the revenue on here as well. So right now, total revenue, um, total revenue is approximately 
$2.9 million short of the expenditures. So the expenditures right now exceed revenue by $2.9 million. Uh, so uh, at this point, I have, as far as revenue from the Department of Ed, I have it the same amount that we're going to receive in the current fiscal year. Uh, there is a, uh, an estimate that is available uh, that I am not using because it's just an estimate at this time and there hasn't been any movement in Harrisburg to confirm that we're going to get that amount of money. Uh, but it would come close to uh, the amount of money, somewhere close to the amount of money that we're short. Now, that, that will work out. I know that in the past when they give us estimates, they come kind of close, but not close enough. Uh, so there has also been discussion and conversation about a no tax increase. So what I have in this document is uh, taxes are flat at this point. Uh, I did modify the number to uh, align itself with the new assessments and, or any increased assessments. So it did take in that number and bring it up to current did increase uh, taxable revenue approximately uh, $495,000, somewhere thereabouts, over last year with the same assessed value, the same millage. Uh, so right now, I do not have a tax increase in any of these numbers. Uh, so if the Department of Ed money comes in to where uh, they're estimating it to be, then the, the challenge of that goes away. But, but understand that um, move, that's, not, that's not a promised amount for ensuing years. So next year, they could take it back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and then, so the, the reason why I'm saying that is that the risk with that is, is that if we don't prepare for that and we walk out, we roll out and we don't have some uh, small tax increase, then the tax increase will be larger in the ensuing year, and quite honestly, um, uh, in my experience, when you have consistent uh, or manageable tax increases versus not having a tax increase, and then in the ensuing year, you have to make up for what you didn't do the year before, that discussion and conversation is much more difficult than if you were to just gently um, uh, increase taxes if that's the case. But the goal is always to minimize any uh, financial impact on taxes. Mm -hmm. That is always the goal. Uh, and that's uh, when we go over the each, each line item and there are thousands of them, that is the purpose of knowing them so that we know what we're looking at. That's why you see that some of the line items uh, in supplies, other expenditures are flat uh, because we're not looking to uh, increase were just be just because that seems to be a, a thing that people do in this case we're not, we, we don't do that and we haven't done that for the over the last four years so over the last couple of years uh, we've done a 3.9 one was a 3.0. Mm -hmm. uh, then the last two years, we did 3.9. Uh, the index told us that we could do 5.1%. Uh, I think the year before that, it was 4.3. This year, I think it's 6.2. They said that we can increase taxes, which we're not going to do that. Right. Yeah, that that's, we're just not going to do that. Um, so we should be mindful and responsible enough to know that we can't wait an entire year and then say, oh, folks, by the way, we should have did something a little bit last year, um, but now we see that the impact is going to be greater next year. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm telling you, that conversation, yeah. that's a difficult conversation. Um, so anyway, it's something to think about. If, it's, if we get what we're supposed to get from Department of Ed, then the conversation is, is really reduced to, to nothing. And... Uh, and then it doesn't become an issue next year. So it's just something we have to just keep in mind as we get closer to voting on the budget.
That concludes my report. Parent student advisory. So last night we had our parent student advisory committee meeting, combination of Zoom and in person in the Darby Township Library. There were about a dozen people at Darby Township and maybe about two dozen on Zoom. We covered topics as, such as one, uh, Act 158, the Pathways to Graduation. Ms. Burke from the Kindergarten Center did a presentation on transitioning from kindergarten to first grade. We had our school announcements, our local community announcements, and then we had the remainder of the time as an open discussion about how to move that uh, committee forward and just about how we meet and where and when and some ideas about that. Um, the next meeting will be in the summer. We are still determining that, um, but that's about it. Unless, Ms. Perry, I missed something. That's it. Uh, then there were a lot of people here today that were here last night. Um, policy, you should have a policy packet in front of you. Um, the March policies, if you remember, were all financial. We had to raise some limits on bidding and quotes because the state had raised limits on bidding and quotes. Um, there are no second readings this month. There are four first readings, and they all have to do with the same thing, which is students who are homeschooled. So you have all the packets, uh, I'm sorry, all the policies in your packet. 137 has to deal with um, parents signing the affidavit for who they are claiming to homeschool. And it gives the uh, district, in extreme cases, the ability to deny a parent who has shown that they have not been able to homeschool to keep doing so. Uh, there's an appeal process for that. We've never had to use it. Um, but it is, if the policy passes, in there um, just as a, a safeguard in case somebody says they're homeschooling but really doesn't follow through with that. That's 137. 137.1, uh, homeschool kids are allowed to participate in extracurricular. So if a kid is being homeschooled and wants to play football or be in you know, the yearbook, they are allowed to do that. And that policy helps determine their eligibility and that they have to meet requirements to keep doing it like our kids do. Um, 137.2 is the same thing. It's about eligibility for home education kids but it's about co-curricular activities, mainly for us would be about band. So obviously, I'm homeschooling my child. I can't have a one-man band in my house. I get the opportunity to take advantage of the band in our schools. But I also can't send my kid to Academy Park all day because now they're not homeschooled. Now they're a full-time Academy Park student. Um, so it does give them the right to participate in co-curricular activities but it limits that right to a quarter of the school day so that they're still qualifying as a homeschool kid but still have access to something that they may not have access to as a home education student. Um, and then the last one, 137.3, is new to us, but it's the same thing, homeschool kids being eligible for VOTEC. Just like if they were ours, they'd be eligible for VOTEC and have to follow through with applying and being accepted, homeschool kids can, can do the same thing. So all four policies will be first readings, but they all essentially have to do with the same kids, uh, the same idea, which is the rights of home education kids, homeschool kids. Any question on those? Okay. Uh, the last thing is the gift that keeps on giving discipline guidelines. They are the last three pages in your packet. Um, we did try to meet as a subcommittee over email, but we sort of got sidetracked with some other projects. So really the big question right now that came from prior discussions is, one, a reminder that this is a draft and that it is not policy, it is guidance. So it doesn't need to be voted on, it just needs your input. But the big thing that was sort of debated by a couple board members the last time is the small infractions and whether small infractions should lead to exclusion from school after whatever number of, of, of infractions. I know there were at least one or two people that were not in favor of that, and then a couple other people that said, well, maybe we should talk about that. So it's really just a discussion now, or a chance for input now, if how the board members feel about 
repeated smaller infractions like failure to follow directions, class disruptions. The major stuff, seemingly in my opinion, everybody was on the same page about. Um, it was that small infraction piece where there was a little bit of back and forth, then we wanted to go to the subcommittee and bring it back. Now we're back. So the subcommittee hasn't met, so there haven't been any changes in these guidelines. There's been no last changes. Month, it's the exact right? same thing that was presented a month ago. Um, we had tried to do dates, and then we had talked about policy, but we're not really talking about policy yet because we had already reviewed those. We're back to the: do we try to get the subcommittee back together, or do we just let's all let's get it over with and do it while we're standing here, kind of thing? Um, because this has been revisited over and over again, and we're going to run out of time if we're making changes and need to input, or I'm sorry, implement this for the start of next school year. So my intention for this was to put it out on the floor, take whatever notes anybody wants to give, and then come up with what will be a final draft to then work with administration for implementation. So to me, I would say a final draft needs to be done by June so they can start getting it in the school handbooks. Now, could we stretch that to mid-July? Yeah, but then we're starting to cause other problems. But if you're asking me, it needs to be done by June for handbooks. So I, I, I think I did make it clear that I'm, I'm really not comfortable with a suspension at a second minor infraction, especially if that minor infraction includes things like forgetting their school ID or um, being late to school. And then my concern about this is, regardless of how we move forward, in my opinion as a parent, it seems to be more enforcement and staffing that's an issue at the high school. So if we're struggling with what the current rules we have, what can be put into place so that they're able to enforce even more guidelines? Um, I mean, I'm not saying no changes need to happen, but at the same time, I don't want to bog down administration if they don't have the tools they need to be able to handle, the tools and the staff they need to be able to handle this. Sure, we can turn this into a we can turn this into a survey and report back. If you have time, I have a counter question. Yep. They're in the building. I would rather <laughs> give us some answers. Yeah, I, I don't think I'll have a problem getting answers from them for this. And I'm I'm sorry. I should have. I, I really love what Mrs. Washington just shared. I do agree that we should maybe survey some staff and some admins and get their opinions. But then um, I'm wondering. When we do come up with a final draft, is it possible to make it available for the public to see before we're like, yeah, go ahead and do this? Because I mean, I do think parents' opinions are valuable as well. I mean, there's nothing stopping you from surveying the parents. It doesn't need to be reviewed like first reading and second reading because we're steering clear of the, the policy discussion. Right. Um, and you have to advertise it anyway, but Bob, to my understanding there's nothing stopping us from getting community input, correct? Um, <clears throat> that sounds great and all, but um, can we get some input from the students? So like the leaders in the building, so I know they have like student council and stuff. Honor Society, Honor Society regular schmegler old students like myself. Yeah. And then some of those heavy hitters. Maybe they have some input in this. I'm wondering if it's um, for the discipline committee, if you guys are um, opposed to removing the suspension from second inf infraction. I'm not either. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Washington. I'm, I'm not opposed at all, but I do, I, I'm hesitant to move forward at all, but I, and, and I agree with that. I feel like we're in a good spot. Like, I wonder if so I could make it a note until we get survey results back. 
so that it's not lost, but we're still getting what was requested. That'd be great. In terms of timeline, two weeks or so? Or, or do, you, do you think you need more time? Can I have a day to think about this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, my, my, my suggestion is there is state testing about to happen next week. Um, so that's like a two week, three week, maybe a four week process. So we're in June already. So again, if um, the board could have had um, a retreat, an executive session to discuss this stuff um, prior to tonight's meeting. Um, so again, I'm gonna suggest that the board do their due diligence and actually, but on a second note, um, I would like the copy of the handbook, please. I have it. You, have you do it, thank, thank you. you. So again, if we're waiting for administration, that means we're waiting until June. Um, but then they gotta pack up all the books. They gotta mail them off. So again, we're in the middle of June, right? About the May-ish, the end of May-ish. I think we can get it done before June. Uh, but we don't want to put constraints on administrators like they don't have nothing else to do. I would agree with that sentiment. I don't want to put it on But I would also say, well, what I'm not speaking for them, this will be important enough for them to find time to do I understand that, but at the same time, we have been doing this for how many months? A couple. A couple months again. So again, we're forcing administrators to stop what they need to do so that the board can get some information when the board members could have just walked inside a building and saw for themselves what goes on. Forcing? No, I didn't, I didn't say forcing, I said. They're I, forcing administrators. That, that would be forcing them if they have other things to do. They, bear, they better can do their jobs now because they're too busy handling discipline. So, I mean, we have barely a staff. My fair, um, I, I just don't feel as though, in my opinion, um, that we should be taxing staff when, as a board member, you can go see for yourself and then have some ideas and not wait until the end of May to get the survey or force administration to do a survey and then they're back on further in their work. PSSA is up. Well, we appreciate the... Um the staff who are going to give their input regarding the survey. I'll work on the survey. Right, okay. since the, the board members have requested it. Okay. We don't want them to not think that we took time to ask them their no, suggestions not, and recommendations. Not at all. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else for policy? Okay. Next up, property. Good evening, everyone. Um, this uh, this evening, there is uh, no voting items in the property committee, but I have several items that I just would like to update the board. Um, Mr. Baxter touched on um, some of our um, personnel um, changes. We recently had uh, one of our custodians promoted to the uh, to our plumber position. Um, he's hitting the ground running, familiar with the buildings, and we're really excited to have him take on this role, um, Mr. Martinez. Uh, so he's going to do great. Uh, already working with them to, you know, get them um, onboarded as uh, quickly as possible. We are also already started uh, interviewing uh, potential replacements. We've had some great candidates come in. So hopefully, um, you know, working with HR, uh, that will be uh, concluded. Hopefully, uh, by the end of this week, and maybe we have that position filled very soon. Um, I'm also requesting and working with HR and the business office to reinstitute our maintenance C mechanic position. Um, we currently have one of our um, maintenance personnel out on personal matters or items and um, we're not really anticipating that they'll be back. So this could be a buffer. Um, some of the work orders that are mounting for that particular position be very helpful to have someone on staff uh, now and through the summer to really knock out uh, a lot of the requests. So uh, you will see that. Um, April 12th, I believe that was the uh, a half day or report card conferences. 
we held our annual environmental facility meeting, um, onboarding a lot of uh, our new employees. We have several on the grounds committee and one newer custodian. So uh, we discussed, um, you know, um, environmental concerns in the buildings, um, right to know for MSDS sheets, um, safety, and some other matters. One of the uh, items that we did discuss is our um, uh, flushing program here, um, and that's the uh, packets I passed out. So we are not actively testing for lead water. Uh, the last two summers we um, installed close to 30 um, filtered uh, water fountains and bottle fillers throughout the district. Um, so that was a big help um, upgrading, um, you know, our, our water fountains coming out of COVID. We also plan to continue that to make some replacements and repairs to some other fountains that we didn't get to yet. But uh, Academy Park has uh, a large amount of them, so we will we'll be um, changing a few more out there. And the few that are left in the other schools will be uh, doing our work to uh, make sure that they're working correctly. Um, so with the flushing memo uh, that you guys have, our custodians are on board to go around and um, you know flush some of those other spaces. We're not really um, anticipating people trying to get water from uh, a hand wash sink, but if spaces like um, nurse's office or um, teacher's lounge areas like that. Um, I already talked to food service and they uh, a lot of their devices are, are already on like a filtration system, so pretty confident that we're making our needs. Um, I will follow up with our environmental consultant just to make sure that we're doing everything we can to have a, a safe, uh, safe drinking water in our schools. And um, that is also to be compliant with uh, Act 39 of the school board code as well. So just wanted to inform anyone or if anyone had any questions uh, regarding that. Um, we have two big repairs going on at the moment, or one was completed last week. There was a, <coughs> a staff bathroom at Academy Park that we switched over to give the staff more um, you know, safety and security as they can use the restrooms. Uh, it was an old style lock that doesn't fit the needs of our school anymore, so that finally was repaired. Uh, some Several uh, components of those locks were on back order, so it took a little bit of time. And if you notice maybe a crane outside or those big generators we have out back of Academy Park, uh, several components of them were aging, so we were able to um, work with a new vendor to make repairs, and um, it was a big, tic big ticket item for when I got um, here, so I'm glad we're making headway and making the repairs. And some additional repairs uh, may be needed that we're on top of and we're gonna make sure it gets taken care of. And um, finally, we also had a, um, a, I guess a plumbing issue at, um, at the kindergarten center a few weeks ago. Um, weren't really sure what was going on. Um, we had some electrical issues underground that it seemed like some of the trash trucks or heavy duty trucks were causing uh, an electrical issue underground. So we were able to revert those lines above um, and across to where our uh, pumping station is. So um, that's a temporary repair, but we will reevaluate if that's what we're gonna uh, keep going forward. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll keep with the, you know, a, a, a look at that. Um, that concludes my report. If there's any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Next up, safety. Good evening. I'll be as quick as possible so that my uh, <laughs> cohort in the back here can, can leave in a an acceptable amount of time. I would like to yield my the rest of my time at the end of my presentation for maybe one or two of them later on. Anyway, I'll just keep going. So, <laughs> all right. So, um, so I have a few topics: uh, review of ongoing projects, uh, camera system update. Uh, over spring break, we installed cameras in the auditorium and the gymnasium. Um, exterior cameras are also being updated at the high school outside of the gym. Uh, those are o older cameras, they're like 400, 480p. They all give us a very good uh, shot at the, the park or the parking lot. So we're gonna be updating those as well. Sharon Hill's gonna be getting some updated cameras in the next couple of weeks, but because of testing, that's gonna be done after hours because of drilling that has to be done into the building. Staffing wise, uh, we hired one security officer for APHS and I'm still currently uh, holding interviews for the remaining two positions at the high school. Cardinal Point, um, 
all their officers are in place except for one, and that final officer will be placed on Monday. So we'll be at full staff security-wise by next Monday. That's all I have. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, Um, were there any questions regarding safe parks? Um, that is going to be now has been changed to a board decision. It's been um, asked to put it on the agenda for Thursday um, for a new vote. A, a vote of termination or not of the contract. Termination for what part? So uh, that would be a board member discussion. Mm -hmm. The administration. Bob, I can ask that question. Termination of what part? Breach of contract. Breach of contract when? March 1st. Well, they showed up to the building prepared and ready to work without their clearances on the 20th, right, on March 20th. So originally, they were supposed to um, begin March 1st, and we extended their time to March 20th, to my understanding. And on March 20th, they, pre they came prepared and ready to work. I believe there were 19 staff members. Um, and, and we did meet with them and have a converse, you know, had a conversation with them. Prepared, ready to work before the sun came up. We believe it was 6.35 a.m. And um, our human resources director did not have their clearances. And when they uh, came into the building to work, they were aware that none of them, the district had zero uh, clearances from safe corridors in terms of the employees that they hired. So we want to have a, um, a board discussion about um, whether they think, whether the board believes that we should continue with them. Um, it was mentioned earlier when we had a, a meeting with uh, the board regarding precedent in terms of other contracts as we move forward. But that's not true. So when, when they came in the 20th. Excuse me, Mr. Wait, hold on. Point of information. So, question. We approved their contract on February 23rd, 2023. Right. We expected them to have employees ready in three weeks. No, we're, we're talking about the, the based on the contract. Well, it's based on the contract. But so, what, what I'm asking, you, you gave me some dates. So, the board approved their contract. The board approved their contract on February 23rd, 2023. And the board expected them to have three weeks to hire their employees. So the statement said you, you were ready. So the statement didn't mean that you were ready. Okay. Um, and then him being ready, you're telling me that he didn't send over the proper, not, I'm not saying he, the organization did not send over the proper documentation before March 21st? Is that correct? Can we bring um, Mr. Baxter to the podium? Is that correct, Mr. He's Butler? <laughs> okay. They sent, um, I can have it. Don't worry. Hold I on, we'll it. get the information for everybody. They sent the um, information on March 19th at 9.59 um, on that Sunday night. And they were supposed to start that Monday. But then when Mr. When Mr. Baxter... Um, checked it, none of them, no one had all their clearances. So my question is, why didn't anyone say anything at that time? Why is it now that we are uh, sitting back and looking at this and saying, why is it now that they can say that so clearly they can say that they were shot? Why can't it say that you say that at the same time that they are saying to you, nobody that was
Are there any other comments, feedback, suggestions? Before we move I just forward? need some more information. So the request right now for the board from administration is determination of the contract. We did not make any requests. No. Okay, I just want to make sure. I'm, I'm just asking no. questions. So administration did not. So who is asking for the termination? The board members? No, what we said is the board should discuss it. That, that, that's, 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 no. Other board members that clearly said that. That is not what I said. Oh, you didn't say Breach that? Breach of contract. Discussion of breach of contract. Right. So, okay, so that we would discuss an executive so, session. So, okay, so let me, so excuse me, let me, that that, that point of order, uh, point of information, ma'am. I'm trying to get my information together. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear. So I'm going to reword my question. So administration informed the board that it was a breach of contract? Actually, can, Mr. DiOrio. Oh, okay, so hold on. Oh, Mr. They, Butler I, I, has I, I, something I, I, to say. Mr. Butler, I'm asking, because the board, they, they said it was a board decision. Like the board said we, no. no, I said we discussion. should discuss it. I'm sorry, they said it was a board discussion. No, it had to. They that they want to be. have a board discussion. Oh, they want to have a board discussion right. about the breach of contract. Yeah. So who gave you the information about the breach? What, I'm sorry, excuse me, let me ask this question. What individual, human being, gave them, gave, set, no, what individual or human said it was a breach of contract? So was, was it, I heard it, say it was the, the administration saying they didn't say anything. So what board member, uh, let me ask, Mr. DiOrio, let's, let's put this up right there. Did, did, did you, <laughs> there we go. Mr. DiOrio, did you inform any board member that the safe corridors contract was a breach of contract? I discussed this in executive session, so I'm not going to reiterate what I discussed with the board as far as legal matters in executive session. But what I would say in the public is that the contract indicated the contract that was signed by both sides, by, mm -hmm. the, by the board and by uh, safeguarders, indicates the start date is March the 1st. 20 folks ready to work March the 1st with proper clearances. That was extended, as you know, Correct. by the board until March the 20th. Those are the facts that are clear as far as contractually between safe quarters and the contract. Whether or not the board wants to determine based on those facts that they feel there was a breach of the good faith effort to, conf to, con to comply with the contract, that's gonna be a board discussion. I've given some information in executive session as to the legal possible legal ramifications and process involving that. Okay, yes, I was not present at the executive uh, session. Um, so at this point, I guess I'm asking the board members which board member believes that is a breach of contract. Actually, um, to my recollection, we had a meeting. I want to say last month. I'm talking about the meeting that y'all had today that I was not right. Hold on, at. let me let me finish in in regards uh, to a breach of on the subject regarding breach of contract. Um, we had a discussion. Um, I think, yes, it a is. Few it's board, on. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm freezing too. <laughs> a few board members were on Zoom, actually. Um, I want to say, was that last month or the month before, actually? Yes, and Mr. Durio was very clear to um, notify the board that there was a breach of contract. No, we were in we were in this room and, and some of the board members. I were believe on. what I essentially I said at that time was the con I, I reiterated the terms of the contract. The contract said March the first, that was extended by the board by agreement of both parties until March the twentieth. On March the twentieth there weren't twenty folks available to come to work. So that's so, what I said. Correct, Mr. Dior. So, so, so is that, that point, a, is that considered a breach of contract if both parties agree to a different date? Well, I think it's the facts. The facts are that what was promised in the contract did not occur as of March the twentieth. I think that's clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a fact. That's not right. an opinion. Yeah, but what, when no, no. we discussed it, it, it was discussed that even if they had they. No, 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 no. So you're getting confused the executive session upstairs and the violation in the email. That's what you're getting confused.
say something, Mr. Butler, before we move on to the next thing? Well, no, I, well m I guess my opinion of, or my take on this is that mm -hmm. the topic of breach of contract is just a discussion uh, or a possible discussion. It wasn't that um, anyone was saying that there should be. It was presented that there should just be a discussion about that, which is, I mean, for me is, <laughs> is something Butler. that you have to consider when you're having contractual conversations. Mm -hmm. Correct. So it, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that someone would, that a group or individual or whoever would say, uh, there's, you know, should we uh, talk about specific things in the contract? And if you vet them and the conclusion is, is that no, there isn't, it, at least you had the opportunity to talk about it as a group. That's that's my spin on it. Well, but the problem is why now talk about it when they already told us that they had the people to start for a budget. So, okay, that's so here, so here, so here's the here's the challenge. Now, uh, um, let me no. can I say something real quick, Mr. Butler? Now, so the now, if the, Mr. DiOrio? Well, essentially, um, Ms. Washington, what was discussed is just what was presented here. It appears now in, in information that we've just received this evening from Safe Carters is that I believe as of, uh, according to Mr. Baxter, as of today, they have 16 folks that are ready to work as of Monday uh, and possibly more because I believe Mr. Baxter said he, st he still is reviewing some additional applicants' qualifications. Is that, tr is that true? He has 45 more applicants. So, there, so there, may be, there may be some additional folks from, the, from those four or five that do qualify to bring m the number greater than 16. That's what it is. And the conversation essentially was, well, is that a breach of contract or not? And I guess the determination would be whether or not uh, the court would ultimately determine if it was ever presented to a court whether or not there was a good faith effort on the part of Safe Carters to, uh, to comply with the terms of the contract, whether or not there were things beyond their control. There's all sorts of, all sorts of factors, but I mean, the, the fact is that as of March the 20th, there were not 20 folks qualified to begin, which is what the contract said with the extension given to March the 20th by the board and agreed to by them. So what the board decides to do or not would really depend upon what the board as a majority decides. And based upon that then, if it went to a judge ultimately for determination, it would be up to the judge to determine whether or not there was a material, what they call a material breach of contract. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a legal determination by a court. It's not something that the board, the board makes a determination. The board would just decide whether or not to terminate the contract based upon the facts presented. No, my, uh, my only point was going to be that when you're looking at contracts, um, one has to expect, or I know from my point of view, I have to expect that there are going to be questions about uh, whether the organization, one is acting in good faith, uh, whether the, uh, in this case, the district is acting in good faith. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we have, as a district, acted in good faith uh, for a multitude of uh, on many different levels. Uh, but I will say to you that if, uh, I'm not saying Mr. Curry's name because to put him out there, uh, but just because he has a huge project uh, that's going on right now outside the HVAC, uh, but I can use that as well. So you have a, uh, a, uh, a project that has to do with the generators over at the high school that has been an issue in this district, he didn't mention this, since 2012. And they have not 
been in good standing since that time. So we have that project going on, right? So for that project to start, and then the contractor say to Mr. Curry, oh, by the way, I can't get a sub or I can't fulfill uh, this contract with the necessary staff, we're going to have to pause that, is completely unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And we would ask, well, most of our bid documents have penalties built into it. If you don't do the job, you're paying us money back. Mm -hmm. And then you get kicked off the job, and, and we, it, it gets handled that way. In this case, that wasn't the way this contract was written. It was more casual. The contracts that we have that Mr. Curry will put forth, and it's just not Mr. Curry, other departments do it as well, are very specific, that if you don't fulfill specific details in your contract, there's a penalty. Uh, and there is no flexibility. Uh, and we, it's not a give and take. It's, that's what the words say, and that's the way that what we're going to stick to. So um, I think, again, going back to the breach of contract, it's a, it's a conversation that, for me, it doesn't surprise me that someone would ask that, because uh, there were many different dates that this organization was supposed to start. It didn't happen. And we were gracious enough to... Um, continue to work with them in good faith. But it, the, the conversation doesn't surprise me that it would come up as, is this a viable option? Should we or should we not? But I think it's just a conversation. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, I tend to agree with Mr. Boyd, but don't you think that it's important for, for them to be in that conversation and to see what's going on? But that's a different, um, not to interrupt, that's a different, that's a different topic. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, no, the, no, the, no, yeah, sure, it's, it's a different topic. Listen, I think no, that's no, part of them being there, and that is, that is the great truth in this case, because right. we realize that yeah. it is. Correct. So I think those deadlines and timelines start to set, because we know that it's important. That's what I see. Well, well, so we know that it's important, important if it is yeah. important, so what is the conversation mm -hmm. about uh, uh, the termination? So, so and, and let me put a, a different stamp on this. Can I, have a qu can I ask a question real quick, Mr. Butler? So the meeting y'all had this evening was with Safe Corridors, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they left thinking what? That, oh, it was Monday. that they would start on Monday yeah. with the 16th. Um, and Mr. Baxter would continue to look at the four to five. Okay, and then secondly, um, good faith. Um, in my opinion, and from constituents in the community. Not saying that administration was the one, but it was told throughout the constituents that the administration did not want safe corridors, and this is why we're at this point where we're at yeah. with them not being high school. I'm, I'm not saying it was y'all. I'm just saying what the people. Okay. And, and the public says. Now, I think that a lot of the, the people that I saw there were from the community, right? And we don't want them to say that we just say yes because we say yes because they had already heard that the administration, not the board members, the administration didn't want them. And basically the board members forced them on to the district, right? So when we talk about breach of contract, when this is out in the public in such a way, um, it really looks crazy. Yeah. It really looks crazy, you, you know what I mean? Like, and that's why I said what I said last time, well, administration didn't want them anyway, because that's what, what was out there. Uh, okay. You know, I'm done. So you, okay. you know what I'm saying? Like, so, I what you're I, and I said this at the last time we had this meeting. Matter of fact, I was on Zoom and I had no voice. That's, that's what I was, when I said it. Um, because I had heard it months before then and I brought it, left it, and it is what it is. So, that's why I'm like, now we want to do a termination. What is the election year? So I'm gonna vote if I if I'm you know what I mean it's election year. May is next month. So so I'm, I'm gonna want 
Yeah, I'm a parent, so I'm, an, I'm if I'm a parent out there, y'all yeah. better be saying yes yeah. because you want me to you want me to vote for you, right? Can I just? Now, what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is, if I if I'm a parent at Camry Park, and it's voting season, you better be saying yes, because if not, then I'm gonna spread your name all through the district so you don't get revoted. So that's what, what I'm saying is, as a parent, you, you know what I'm saying? As a parent, as a high school, so. No, no, I understand the contractual discussion, and I, that's why I said. If, if we had a meeting with them earlier and they are expected to work on Monday, so all of a sudden that we need a discussion about it? I don't think that's anything is all of a sudden. I think we've been talking about the timeline. Okay. So, Butler, and then we're going to move on to the next. So. Okay, and then after you, we'll move to the next. Um, so this, uh, I've mentioned it a number of times in. Uh, some of my uh, meetings or some of my presentations uh, uh, as to how this, I'm not too sure how it got convoluted out in the community, but if you go back and look at all the recordings, I've said a number of times that this was a board initiative mm -hmm. and the initiative eventually became the responsibility of this administration. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so we took that on. So we didn't take the position that we were going to somehow uh, uh, create an environment where this was not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I can confirm that because looking at the contract, there were uh, financial obligations which have been fulfilled um, given the fact that the starting date wasn't what the starting date was. So I'm not too sure how that conversation got out there, um, but uh, I'm hoping that this clears it up, that administration uh, took on uh, a responsibility uh, because the, the things uh, that needed to be uh, fulfilled, uh, the board certainly couldn't take, could, didn't have the capacity to do it, nor was it their responsibility to ensure the work, the hard work that Mr. Baxter is doing with these clearances and those kinds of things. So. Yeah. I, um, no, no, I, 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 I know that, and that's what I iterated to the individuals that mm -hmm. brought it to my attention, that it wasn't an administration issue, it was a board issue because they didn't do their due diligence before the board decided to throw it on the laps of administration. So let me be clear, I, I'm only speaking about myself, um, made sure of that. Um, and again, I don't want the the era of the board members to keep continuously falling on administration's lap, right? I don't want it, you guys to keep getting beat up, keep getting whatever, because the board members aren't doing their due diligence. So that's why I keep saying, that's why I keep asking the question, the, did the administration, did the board, I want to make sure I'm completely, it's, it's a defined line that it wasn't the administration some of this fell on the board members not doing their due diligence and researching the organization as they should have before even coming to administration to ask them to do the final steps, if that makes sense. Right, but Ms. You, you Ms. understand if that makes sense? Yes, Ms. Monroe, what's that? We, we can't, as administrators, uh, our job is to make stuff happen, right? So we, we can't spend our valuable, busy time right. on wondering whether or not this thing is supposed to work or not work. We have to get it to work so we can move on and do the rest of the hard work and okay. make sure things are stable in the district. But uh, I and think, I'm sorry, one second. But had the board did their due diligence, right, and research, went out, went to other schools to see, talked to other buildings that they are employed in, then I think that it would have been a more responsible vote on the board members, and when we came for discussion months and months, and we wouldn't be back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, and, and then by the time it got to the administration, it would have been an easier and smoother transition, if that makes sense. Well, they would be working today had they had their clearances. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be here at the table having the conversation. But, okay, so let me say this, so, because I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm, sure. I'm, I'm trying not, to be, I'm, I'm trying to sure. be very, very nice right now. 
No, so, so Mr. I just want to say, so Mr. Baxter, I want to, I mean, if I could stand up and give him a round of applause for um, his due diligence, right? So, so the I wish the board would have did their due diligence as we well. We did Instead when we voted to approve the contract. That's the board's job to, no, to you, vote. No, people to, voted and didn't even know what the organization was doing because every meeting you had more and more questions. So again, if you had did your due diligence in 2022, then we wouldn't be having this discussion right now. So we're going to move forward. And so again, oh, okay. did you have, did you have, if okay. the board did their due diligence in 2022, we wouldn't be here in April 2023. So They're you're blaming the, the board thing. because safe corridors didn't have their clearances. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm blaming the board because it's laxidated. Right, just, you don't do your no, research. We, we acted in good faith as a district. We acted in good faith. I'm, talking about, board members. I'm talking about the board members. If you didn't have questions and when you had the questions, you could have brought the organization in and not wait until February and then expect somebody to hire somebody in three weeks when Southeast, when the district can't even get employees in three weeks. You expect another organization to do the same thing. So again, if the board had did their due diligence, you could have asked all those questions in December, January, February. And when you vote at the end, people still had questions. There's no okay, it's on tape. What, what are we talking about here? Would, would everyone? And that's what do, that is. Do you, have, do you have something to say before? I, I, Cause I, I really need to make a, a stab at wrapping this thing up. So I have, I have two questions. One is for the administration and then one is for our solicitor. Um, so at Academy Park specifically, not just teachers, how many staff members are we down? How many bodies are missing from that building that we're expecting people to clone and duplicate themselves and handle this building? Because, I mean, just teachers alone, the HR report says 22, and then we have security. There's all these bodies were down. And I think, I feel like our staff has already come to a past meeting and expressed that how great just that first day was. Um, so that's my question for administration is how many bodies are we down in Academy Park? And then for the solicitor, um, he brought up a material breach of contract. And from what I can see online, a material breach of contract would mean that the contract is Ill, irreparably broken and defeats the purpose of entering into the contract in the first place. So in my opinion, I'm not an attorney or a judge, in my opinion, it is not irreparably broken and we still are trying to fulfill the purpose of putting more safety, security, and people in Academy Park. So could you define material uh, breach of contract? Uh, Mr. Durie, I, 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 think, I think you just defined, you just read what it, well, what it meant. Just Google, I'm not even Okay, clear. so, but I, I, really, I, th this needs to be wrapped up. Yeah. I, this, this, is, this was supposed, I, I assume it was supposed to just be a discussion. Yeah. And no one has, it can be a healthy, constructive conversation. No one has said, oh my God, this contract has got the end because of these reasons. The president put in an email. And she has to vote on it. And she has to vote on it. Yes. Okay. Period. And she put in an email. And she and said, let's listen, terminate no, the contract. Let, no, let, 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 let me finish. Let, I, I, mean, I was asked a question listen, and I responded to listen, a question. Listen to me. There has I'm been, so there, there, there have been, this, this, this whole venture take the, the company name out of it, mm -hmm. has been so fast-tracked and coming from so many different angles. I, from a business point of view, I understand the confusion that could exist and has, that has been created. We all know that this moved at a faster pass, pay, pace than anyone could grab their hands on. You go back and you look at the meetings, yeah. and even for administration, this thing was moving fast and we were hopping from decisions that we did not make. Mm -hmm. But now here we are talking about this thing and it all supposed to be, it was only supposed to be another discussion because it moved so fast that folks didn't have an opportunity to even think about some of the things that they're thinking about now. Here, no, no, it, okay. You know, listen, listen, I, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it up. I need a I'm going to wrap it up. You, listen, I can give I can give a lot of examples, but I'm going to wrap it oh, up. Oh, no, no, I'm going to give an example. Uh, no, but we don't have to. But the whole thing is this, Mr. Butler. I, I totally agree with you. I 
excuse me, Mr. Uh, Fowler, thank you. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm talking about all the questions, the fast pace. It was, y'all were like jackrabbits. If the board had did their due diligence in October, you could have been formulating questions. Listen, Mr. Butler, you could have formulated questions. October, special meeting. October, special meeting. November special meeting. Dece How many special meetings did we have in 2023? 1,075. I'm exaggerating. Then January comes up. No questions. Then the vote comes up. They, the board could have had many discussions. We could have had executive sessions. We could have had retreats. We could have been talking about this for months. So what I'm saying is, I want the constituents to know, it had nothing to do with the administration. They did what the board asked them or what the board told them to do. The board did not do their due diligence. And you would have been jumping around like jackrabbits when you have other things to be work working on. I agree with you. But at some point, people have to take accountability. Just like I take accountability when I come at people's necks. And I mean what I say. I even put it in writing. And I mean what I say. You have to be accountable. You were voted in by constituents. You were voted in to do a job. You don't get paid for it. But guess what? Some of us been on here more than two terms. Some of us been on here for two terms. Some came to meetings. Some didn't come to meetings. Some were involved. Some weren't involved. It is not the responsibility of the admin to food spoon us, feed us like babies. We are all adults. We all work. Every person on the board. Well, you retired. Due diligence. Accountability. If we expect to have accountability from y'all, we need to have accountability of ourselves. All I'm going to say, that this, uh, this should be on the next board, a topic on the next board retreat. Because there well, are well, well, I'm going to ask you this question. When the board retreat? I'm just saying. <laughs> it's going to be a, we, 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 we waiting. We still okay. waiting again. So. Okay. But that retreat is I'm, not going to happen until after the election because we can't even get together to even do Ms. Monroe okay, policies. Said, I'm going to stop talking so we can we can end this conversation. We have one card tonight, Mrs. Barley. Before she starts, so we're putting this on the agenda to terminate the contract. Or are we going to put it back on next week? So we're going to discuss it again in the next meeting? Executive session? I'm going home. I'm going home. I won't be doing no executive session tonight. Board members, board members, there is something that we have to discuss for five minutes. With nothing to do with safe corridors, but with the betterment of our district. Does it, does it have to do with safe corridors? No. no. Okay, not what I have to speak to you about. And okay. it's essential. And you're you going first, correct? And I'm going first. Okay, that's but all I that matters. Need everybody Thank you. Here. Okay. Hi, Francesca Barley, 418 Lafayette Ave in Collingdale. Oh, hi, Francesca. Everybody knows me and my address. Collingdale. Right. Um, so I just, not to beat a dead horse, but I would like to um, talk about safe corridors and how excited from a parent standpoint that I was on the morning that they had showed up. And I completely understand what you're saying about the clearances. Um, but from what I'm information gathering, like Ms. Monroe, um, Dr. Winder, you had said that after the meeting, you had said they're going to start on Monday. So if they're going to start on Monday with the 16 they have, why on Thursday would it be up for a breach of contract termination? Um, so, so that's wait, I'm going to answer sorry. you. Sorry. No, I'm not oh, okay. going to let you go down the road. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. I don't have to know. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie, sir. No, she asked me when did we say in the meeting they were going to start, and that is what we said. After that meeting, Mr. DiOrio had a meeting with the board members, and that was changed. So their governance is what, the, she just asked me what was said in the meeting, 
and I responded. Okay. So, and then I didn't know that this was going to take place, and then that took place. And so, so then I have a question for the board so members. I'm just taking uh, notes. Th thank you, Dr. Warren. I have a question for the board members. Who or whom brought up the topic of breach of contract? I did, and we are moving President, on. okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so anyway, Thank let, me, you. let me just get back to what I was saying. Um, so we have the 16 people. The contract was for 20 people. I'm not sure why we're fighting over the four people. If it's a taking money away from them, then could could that, I'm not sure about how that works, but could something be done like a, a you know, a, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but take some money so we could start with the 16. Um, and then if the contract is null and void, I'm just looking forward for next towards next year. What is the board's alternative to put in their place? So that's that's just where I'm going with this. I mean, if there's something else that can be put into place that's you know pr proven, but I'm as a parent, I was extremely happy to see them there. I would be extremely happy to have them in the building. I think it's a matter of safety. I think it's a matter of actually staff morale as well. Um, the staff was really happy for it as well. Um, so that's all I want to say. If we don't have this, and it is, m if you guys are moving forward and that does happen, can we discuss another alternative? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there another card? Because I have a question about what she just asked. Okay. Yeah, y'all, 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 that y'all should, I just, I just have a Go question. Go ahead and quick. Sure and quick. So board members, what is your alternative if you decide it's a breach of contract for next year. Did y'all discuss that executive session as well? We're not taking that with us, no. Excuse me, I'm at a point of order. I'm asking a question. It wasn't discussed. It wasn't discussed in the executive, so the board has no, no other options, no other nope. uh, suggestion or anything. Okay, great, thank you. May, may, I, may I just say something, sure. Madam President? Uh, I just wanna make make it clear, Ms. Witsit, since you weren't present. What, what was discussed in executive session was simply possible legal ramifications of a reconsideration of the contract. That's all that was discussed. There wasn't any th discussion as far as what board members wanted to do or not to do or alternatives to that. That should be discussed in the public. It was just my information to the board, legal information that I gave to the board concerning possibilities that I heard that I suspected might be coming up in the future. I just thought I should instruct the board as to what possible legal ramifications would be involved. That, that's all, this, uh, and I'm not just saying that for you. I want the, I want the public to understand that this, the terms of this contract and the circumstances of the contract, the de that was not discussed with the board. There was no conversation in that respect. It was merely me providing legal information. Uh, thank you, yes, Mr. Yes, Yuri. So the, uh, Ms. Yeah. Ms. Abney, since you brought up the breach of contract, do you have any ideas or suggestions? We're moving on. Whoa. No. Oh, okay. So, Ms. No. Abney, since, excuse me, no, no. Nope. Nope. We going there? That's where we going. Yeah. That's where we going. We're closing. That's where we, I moved to adjourn the meeting. Okay. All right, it's been moved in second. The motion is on the floor. Did you have anything? Oh, no. I, the motion I, is I, on I the floor. Yes. The motion is on the floor. You have to address the, you have to address the motion. It's been seconded. You have to address the motion. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any others who would like? There's a second on the floor, so it has to be voted on. That's what I'm asking. All in favor. It's all in favor. Robert's rules are order. Were there, were were there any others? It was seconded by Rebecca hold Perry. Hold on, hold on. Are there any other opposed to adjourning the meeting? What is a motion in a second? Robert's rules of order. Hold on, hold, hold on, calm down. Calm procedure. down. It's supposed to go motion, no, second. Is there calm any down. further discussion? Uh, there's no further discussion, then and you call for the vote. That is the parliamentary right. procedure. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> you have a 501c3. Don't do not do it. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, you're out of order. No, you're out of order. 
Yeah, right. I'm sorry. Right. Right. That's that's what I that's what I was asking. Right. <laughs> Calm down. Right. Can we can we clean this up in public and we talk Come on. She says she doesn't have anything further. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Oh, not for not for everyone. No. Okay. All right. Are there any opposed to to um? Finishing the meeting. Is everybody in favor of closing the meeting? Aye. Aye. Right. Are there any opposed? Okay. Thank you guys for being here. Have a great night. Thank you all. <laughs> Have a great night.